every day, I wake up to a feast. Where I can sink my teeth into history. Or shock my taste buds with something new. It's here I learned the color of sweetness. Expanded my pantry and my appetite. Every next bite only leaves you hungry for more. I woke up while nature was sound asleep so I could marvel at its kingdom. I strolled through its lush gardens and saw every little wonder up close. Here, you can dance with giants, discover a feast for the eyes, and a feast for the appetite. Walls that hold heroes' stories told me of their bravery. While sacred places blessed my journey. I roamed places that stood the test of time. And others that were there since the beginning. I just woke up from the time of my life. It started with a major throwback. Then I got to meet the big shots. I found a sweet spot between cultures and hung out with the artsy crowd. I even picked up a few things along the way. After that, things kicked into overdrive. It started with a whirlwind through the streets. An unforgettable eats. A celebration of flavor in every bite. And an epic new party at every turn. The best thing about it here, the good times are never over. Good afternoon to everyone here on the Zoom call right now. Ang hirap ngayon eh, no? Kasi talagang lahat online. Kaya di mo makita yung live audience. But anyway, I hope you guys will tune in for today's launch of GPS TV. GPS TV's Go Philippines Soar High. Of course, before anything else, hello to the members of the panel, our media attendees, and our influencers. Thank you so much for gracing your presence uh, for today, from Philippine Star, Manila Bulletin, Inquirer.net, uh, CNN Philippines, we also have from PTV4 and TTG, uh, the Department of Tourism, K 
Tourism Promotions Board, and together with the Hotel Sales and Marketing Association, or HSMA, they are very proud to introduce to us today a pioneering and joint initiative to inform, update, and inspire future travelers on the new norms of a responsible, safe, and mindful tourism. So, siguro, meron sa atin ngayon takot pa mag-travel. It's valid. Ako rin, personally, may onting takot. Siguro yung iba naman sa atin, hindi. Or maybe, knowing also that many of you are ready to travel and jet set to all your favorite destinations, today, this launch is for all of you guys. So, personally, um, coming from my, op my own opinion, traveling now does not only mean for my own leisure, but it is also, again, for the over 40 million Filipinos who whose tourism-related jobs are affected by the pandemic. Me hosting right now is such an honor. It is for them. So I won't keep wait, keep you guys waiting any longer. Kindly use the hashtag go safe, go travel. All right, to help us set the tone of the program, we have the OT Undersecretary Benito Bongsi Bengzon to give us a few words about the new ways of experiencing local tourism. Good day to our friends and partners around the globe who are joining us here in this virtual press launch. On behalf of the Department of Tourism, led by Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat, I wish to send our congratulations to the men and women of the Hotel Sales and Marketing Association of the Philippines in partnership with the DOT and the Tourism Promotions Board in turning a dream into a reality, a dream to showcase the Philippines in a platform that captures the hearts of the new normal travelers through the Go Philippines Soar High or GPS TV online travel magazine. We are in full support of the advocacy of the United Nations World Tourism Organization towards the responsible restart of tourism, which reminds us that as tourism restarts, our responsibilities remain. So for now, as we stay in our homes and wait until we can travel again, allow us first to relive with you the places, the products, and the people that make it more fun in the Philippines. Now we dream. Tomorrow, we will get our luggage and backpacks ready to explore once more. Today, we watch. Soon, we will be the ones to capture the moments again on video and look back at the experience and the memories which were put on hold for a time. GPS TV is an opportunity to keep us dreaming about travel. The liberties we had and the lives we enjoyed before the pandemic and in time take the lead again as the driving force towards market recovery for every community whose life is touched by tourism. So ladies and gentlemen, please follow, subscribe to, watch and tell your friends about Go Philippines, Soar High or GPS TV as it brings us to destinations you desire to wake up to. Thank you and mabuhay. You Sec Bengzon, maraming maraming salamat po for your support to GPS TV and as our tourism restarts, we let us all say sabay sabay, it's more fun in the Philippines. Now we will hear from the COO of the Tourism Promotions Board, Attorney Antoinette C. Velasco Aleones. Greetings to the Hotel Sales and Marketing Association of the Philippines. On behalf of the Tourism Promotions Board, I would like to thank you and to congratulate you for this new pakulo. Ayan, pasabog na naman. After our very successful September online sale, we are poised to launch the GPS. Uh, not the global positioning system, but the Go Philippines Soar online TV show that's being staged by HSMA. Uh, it is truly my privilege and our blessing at TPB that we have a very strong partnership with your association. Only in forging uh, very strong partnerships like ours will we be able to really move forward and restart tourism. Um, I also like that you chose to call it the GPS because it is so related to travel. And personally, 
when I hear the word GPS, then it also reminds me of, of a North Star. You know, the global positioning system is supposed to guide you in your travel in terms of where you are going and the destination where you are headed. And in the same way as partners in the tourism sector, I hope that we are guided by the same North Star, the same compass, that as we embark on yet another successful project such as this, we are not doing this for the sake of the profit or the bottom line numbers. We are really doing this for love of country, for compassion for our fellow workers in the tourism sector, and ultimately that we may be able to handhold each other through this difficult time, relying in God's providence that because we do our best and we try to do the best we can in this situation, then all our efforts will be greatly blessed. Maraming maraming salamat at mabuhay po kayong lahat. Thank you. Thank you so much, Attorney Aliones. Tama po kayo dyan. Itong pakulong to is definitely for the Filipino people and I hope we guide everyone in this project. Now, to tell us more about the GPS TV, Go Philippines Soar High, from the woman of strength herself, may we call on HSMA President Ms. Christine Ibarreta. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Aya, and to, um, to everyone. Good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. We are glad you can make it. You have navigated yourself to the new flight of Philippine tourism. I'm sure you're curious what GPS has in store, but before we marvel at the destinations again, let me give you a quick tour to how this journey began. If the years had taught this industry anything, that is to adapt to the times, from the campaign to revive Boracay to this year's call to go safe, go travel. It was never easy, good times or bad, but we get through the turbulence in style. That is why we're all here, to once again rise to the occasion for local tourism. For the past months, we have been in the front row of the major events and changes in the country. Lost. We sought to find each other, to go back to the core of the community. Many things revealed themselves. I didn't know that some colleagues had food preparation skills like Donna Villarin of Seda Hotels, of the now famous Canny Alley Bake Sushi, and Manila Peninsula's Lolit Saw of Lolit's Kitchen. We were budding, who were budding entrepreneurs. Others were expressing their unique abilities to both make a living and to enrich their minds. That's when the light bulb moment came to us to explore different spaces. Coming from a communication arts degree from UST, it was a long time since I've done any broadcast production. My editing involved actual cutting of the frames and using thin tapes to create scenes. Today, we can use a digital blade to create beat by beat montage with few clicks. Different times, same vision. That was what I learned from my mentors in hospitality like Rose Libonco and Margie Munsayak, to execute the vision of the current times from wandering to properly navigating the industry to soaring heights. That is the current vision of GPS TV. We enjoin you to support our very own online television. Be our travel buddy. Go safe, go travel. Like and share GPS TV on Facebook and subscribe to our GPS TV YouTube account. Thank you. Back to you, Aya. Thank you so much, Miss Christine Ibarreta. Different times, same vision. Wow. Um, I don't know. I just really felt that. And for me, knowing that it is beyond the hype, but it is the deeper uh, sense of purpose of GPS TV, I'm more excited to watch these culturally culturally rich travel shows diba ngayon pa lang guys subscribe na tayo to our youtube channel that is gps tv and like our facebook page at gps tv official ph sobrang excited na ako talaga promise and 
lalo na ngayon, na I know now how to keep myself safe and everyone around me. That's why, again, use the hashtag go safe, go travel. It's a really big relief na right now we will learn how to have a travel that's very free and more of a mindful uh, tourism traveling experience. So ngayon naman, uh, ano yung mga aabangan nating show sa GPS TV? Kasi diba, we've been introducing it. Ano yung mga masusubaybayan natin? And personally, I'm honored to be one of the... Uh, I'm, I'm personally honored to be the one presenting you the programs of GPS TV. Here is When Entertaining meets informative content on YouTube and Facebook. So, ano nga ba yun? Ito na siya. Wow, thank you GPS TV for including my livelihood project on the OBV. I, I didn't even, I, it's the first time I saw it. It's wonderful. Now, I will present to you the four programs na masusubaybayan natin sa GPS TV. <laughs> now, sige, before natin yung discuss, ano nga ba yung GPS TV? As we all know, GPS is the one na makahanap natin sa car, sa phones, to detect our locations. But when we say GPS, in terms of travel and tourism, it's a technology to help us, everyone, to have the safest and simplest route to our favored destination. It will also be like our online travel body, di ba? Kaya kapag gusto natin pumunta sa isang lugar, gusto natin muna malaman kung ano nga ba yung nandun, lalo na ngayon, after and during what is happening right now, di ba? That's why we have Go Safe, and go travel. And our mantra, go Philippines, soar high. Now, on setting the tone, we would, um, we would be needing the help of everyone here in this Zoom call and everyone watching on Facebook to set the hype higher right now to gain back our tourism industry, to gain back the confidence, the trust, and the excitement of our market para makapag-travel tayo ulit. But at the same time, to be accountable for the safety protocols right now. And higit sa lahat, syempre, to generate our needed revenues for the hotel and resorts in the various Philippine tourism destinations. Yung mga sabi ko nga kanina, this launch, everything that we're doing right now is for the four, over 40 million Filipinos who, has, um, who have tourism-related jobs. Now, our target audiences are, of course, no other than you guys watching right now and all over the world people from all over the world and hindi to magiging possible without our bayanihan na tayo mismong mga pilipino tama ba lahat manggagaling yan sa atin and i'm really i'm honestly personally optimistic about it now our format para sa gps tv are live talk show Featured hotels and resorts and travelog. So travelog is like a travel catalog. Now the programs. Then I'm excited na ako. We have four. One safe getaways, your stories, snapshots, and journeys. So ano nga ba yung apat na yon? Very similar but different because the safe getaways is in general um, where we will see the from land to water to air from adrenaline type of uh, traveling to the chillax lang lahat yan makikita natin yan dyan. very experiential now your stories 
what makes tourism complete is not only the place, pero syempre yung kwento ng mga tao na nandoon. At bukod dyan, sa your stories, yung mga nawalan ng trabaho sa tourism industry, we will also feature their stories there, their new ventures. So their power and story of resilience, of getting back up to inspire more people to do the same. And of course, the snapshots. Yeah, to humanize your experience. Jan papasok ang ating mga favorite influencers and vloggers who are also present here in our um, launch. And abangan natin kung sino pa yung mga feature Jan. Lastly, the journeys. Now, kung maririnig natin yung um, comments, opinions, experience ng mga ating vloggers and influencers, we will hear from our distinct professionals and experts from the field of um, disciplines related to tourism. So, di ba? Para siyang trip advisor, parang ganun, na meron tayong more professional expert advice. And that's it. Yun na yung pahapyaw. Hashtag, go safe, go travel. So, guys, don't forget to subscribe sa ating YouTube channel, GPS TV, and like our Facebook page. Paulit-ulit ako, pero sana wag niyong makalimutan, na. <laughs> Anyway, um, at this point, unang-una, gusto ko lang ulit i-emphasize na una ang safety sa pag-travel ngayong new normal. And yan ang hatid sa ating lahat ng GPS TV. At para mas mahikayat ang lahat sa bayanihan on hyping up and getting back up our local tourism industry. And of course, we want to hear from all of you. Kanina pa ako dito nagsasalita. Baka sawa na kayo sa akin eh. <laughs> I am formally opening the Zoom floor for your questions, suggestions, and insights on GPS TV. And to grace us with their presence, let's welcome again the strong women behind GPS TV. Miss Christine Ibarreta. She is our president of Hotel, Hotel Sales and Marketing. And of course, Ms. Marge Munsayak, our hotel sales and marketing chair, both esteemed hoteliers and seasoned experts in the hotel and tourism industry. And of course, some of our special guests to join in the panel. Another prominent figure in tourism, Mr. Bob Zozobrado. He is the president of Pacific Asia Travel Association of the Philippines and travel and lifestyle columnist. Good afternoon. Mabuhay po kayo. It is an honor to moderate your panel right now. And to complete our panelists, we have Ms. Michi Kalika Soto. He is a, she is a top bridal gown and couture designer turned tour operator. She owns SUP Central Tours in Coron, Palawan, a DOT certified tour company that specializes in stand-up paddleboarding tours in the island. Wow, mahilig ako niyan. Her business is based on Bacao Bay, Coron's only five-star resort. Ms. Michi is also an internationally certified SUP instructor who runs and owns the Academy of Surfing Instructor, or ASI. This is paddling, paddleboarding certification body. Once again, Ms. Michi Kalika Soto. Last but not least, Ms. Maria Socorro Ledesma, better known as Ku Ledesma, is a Filipino pop and jazz singer. Beyond that, she has a performing she has been performing for 35 years in the music industry which encompasses more than 1000 concerts all over the world, numerous awards in the Philippines and 20 albums in the Philippine recording industry. She is also the owner of Hacienda Isabella, a member hotel of the Hotel Sales and Marketing Association. Ladies and gentlemen, our panel and our last panelist, Ms. Maria Socorro Ledesma, Ms. Ku Ledesma. Ayan. Just wow. call me Ku, please. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> wow. Good afternoon. Mabuhay po kayong lahat, our dear panelists. And guys, as I speak right now, please jot in your comments, your suggestions, or questions to our Zoom call chat and to our Facebook viewers. 
please feel free to comment on our live your questions and to keep our uh, to start our ball rolling of course i'd like to ask our um in our house lady, Miss Christine Ibarreta. You've mentioned a while ago how all of this started, but could you give us um, a background on where it all started? Like um, your personal take on it. My personal take on it, I wanted HSMA to have a TV show. Long time ago, I was watching miscellaneous, if some people can still remember that, or, um, uh, the likes of uh, the show of Susan Calo Medina. Uh -huh. um, I think ako lang yata nakakaalala nun. Hindi. <laughs> 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 yeah. Nakakaalala kayo. Yeah. <laughs> so we wanted to have like experts from the tourism industry to really, you know, come up with stories or present hotels, resorts, destinations na talagang um, authentic na alam nila kung anong gagawin. Like, for example, I trained with the Department of Tourism to be a third-party um, uh, assessor. So, mm -hmm. I train ako, so I can also go and visit um, places to accredit them. And um, that's it. So, we'll present it. We're going to have like a Samantha Brown or uh, an Anthony Bourdain pair of Filipino style or even better. Wow. So, that's it. So, Ms. Christine... Um, how do you think GPS TV can help the tourism industry get back on its feet? Well, by doing this, we can promote the destinations of the Philippines together with the Tourism Promotions Board in the Department of Tourism. So many places to go. We have the most beautiful places in the Philippines. Let's travel here, give a travel in the Philippines, uh, give back the work, the jobs of the fellow colleagues in the industry. We all need that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, revenues, even konti lang yung profits, at least we have, uh, you know, cash flow as of this time. Mm. Mabuhay po kayo. Pero, ang dami nating, ano eh, ang dami nating kayang gawin with GPS TV. Ano lang, just to, yung quickly ka, summarize it all. Ano po yung main objective of the channel, you think? The main objective is to promote the Philippines and uh, to give um, livelihood to more than 40 million Filipinos, plain and simple. Thank you. Oh, now that the other panelists are present on the screen, feel free to unmute your mic. And Kulare, I'm, I'm, I'm asking someone, feel free to add your opinions. Parang nagchichikahan lang po tayo dito. So, parang hindi tayo masyadong, um, kasi medyo pang matanda yung formal-formal. Eh. So parang ano lang tayo, get loose and feel free to share what you have um, and your experiences. <laughs> anyway, Miss um, Margarita Monsayak. <coughs> Mm -hmm. um, they call me Margie. <laughs> Miss Margie, okay. <laughs> oh nga naman, Miss Margarita. But, but Margarita's very nice, huh? I know. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, 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 you can finally call me Margie. It's easier. <laughs> okay, it's more fun. Miss Margie, yeah. how, do you, um, how do you ensure participating hotels adhere to safety protocols? Well, you know, uh, I will speak first of the members of HSMA. You cannot be a member if you're not accredited by the Department of Tourism. Right? So this is the number one requirement. Now, during this pandemic, uh, all of our members have really been preparing for this and to get our certificate of authority to operate. You cannot open. If you don't have this certificate of authority to operate from the Department of Tourism, you must have passed all the stringent requirements of IATF, DOT, and World Health. So all of the hotel members have actually done their homework during the, the first few months of the pandemic. We were also busy putting together all our health, safety, and sanitation protocols. And you know, there's a constant auditing done by the Department of Tourism to ensure that all hotels are really practicing and providing all the basic and even the advanced requirements of IATF. However, we also adjust to the times, you know, you know for as, as the months 
you know, uh, proceeds and 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 there are more uh, and we are now looking into the gradual opening of tourism. You know, um, um, the depart we in the we in the HSMA and the members, and I'm very sure this will actually happen all over the country for any province that would open slowly to tourism. All of these safety protocols, health and sanitation safety protocols must be implemented. Otherwise, we can never open. But as member of HSMA, we guarantee that all of us are really doing our part. We're implementing what is right, or we will not get our authority to operate. So, wow. Um, it is for me, um, parang it is comforting to know na meron mo nang parang filtering process before That's mapuntahan right. ng tama ba po? That's yun. very true, yes. So because right now, what we really promote is, you know, it's a safe travel. Stay safe. You know, and book confidently in hotels that will provide you that 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 peace of mind, right? That every that that this is a safe. Yeah. 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 Oops. Yon. <laughs> Yon. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Margie. Um, we'll get to know more about that later. For now, Mayor, we have a question for Sir Bob Zozobrado. Hello. Um, diba, di, um, diba they say there's a rose beneath the field. Now you are our, um, paano ba? See, you're the only uh, man here. So you are our knight uh, in the field of roses. <laughs> Anyway, sir, what are the other coordinated efforts of the Philippine tourism industry to boost our economy? Well, can you hear me well? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? We can, can you hear, hear me well? We can hear you. Okay. <clears throat> you know, um, even before the pandemic started, the tourism industry was already doing very well. Uh, in fact, <clears throat> we have contributed 12.7% to our country's GDP. And that shows that uh, the concerted efforts of all the sectors of the industry have been successful in delivering uh, what we have uh, uh, targeted. And um, it's unfortunate that the pandemic brought us down on our knees. However, it doesn't mean that we uh, it's a sign of defeat. No, because the tourism industry people always have fire in our bellies. And in fact, we cannot um, last in the tourism industry if we don't have fire in our bellies. And, you know, let me digress a little bit. <clears throat> when uh, you asked Christine Canina, what's the purpose of this GPS? Well, the, the GPS TV, I think, as, as I see it from a from somebody who's not with HSMA, um, the purpose of this is to keep the fire burning, keep burning, because uh, we, as Christine said, we have a very good product. We offer the best products that anybody can ever offer, maybe in Asia. And um, so we have so much to offer. And something like this, this GPS TV is really uh, there to keep everybody going and to keep our spirits high all the time. Aside from the fact that, you know, it makes us cohesive. Uh, this TV will put all the sectors together. Okay, going back to your question. Um, concerted efforts. Um, you know, the pandemic gave the opportunity for all the sectors to get their heads together, get our heads together, to be cohesive, to think as one. And now the industry is even stronger because of that. My main concern at the very start was uh, we were we were all set to go, 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 rah, rah, rah. We're open, we want to open, and we want to start making money. But then uh, what, what frustrated me a little bit was the LGUs. The LGUs were not cooperating, like what happened to Boracay. Boracay opened. And what happened to the LGUs? They were barring people from getting in and then so many requirements and things like that. Thank goodness, with the efforts of our uh, dear secretary, uh, Secretary of Tourism ha is work has worked on that. And now the LGUs are now more open to our decisions. Whatever decisions they are made by the tourism industry, the LGUs are now open to it and they are now more cooperative. 
So the, the LGU's cooperation together with the concerted efforts of the all the sectors of the tourism industry will mean success once again. Now, um, as far as the future of Philippine tourism industry is concerned, I have no doubt we are going to bounce back and Definitely. we are going to bounce back much, much stronger. You Definitely. have to remember, we have been um, victims, uh, we have been plagued by disastrous uh, uh, earthquakes, by killer typhoons, by volcanic ashfall, and many other things that have happened to our tourism industry. Each time it happens, we bounce back stronger. We're going to bounce back again, uh, but it may take a little bit of time, a little bit of time, but uh, we're going to be there stronger. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Bob. It is true. I agree, Super, that we have a long history of resilience. We always get back up each and every time we are knocked down. But of course, as he has mentioned, we cannot make this possible without the collective effort, right? Thank you. Thank you. Now, Miss Miss Michi Kalika Soto. Hello, hello, Miss Michi. Hi. Um, I'm very, I'm very much curious. Can you tell us more about your uh, passion for surfing? Like, how can we deal with a new normal traveling also as well from your experience? Okay. Thanks, Aya. Thanks for. Um for hosting this, I wanted to tell you that um, my sport is actually the gentler cousin of surf, which is stand-up paddle or paddle boarding. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, ASI, the Academy of Surfing Instructors, is like the paddy to diving, and we are ASI to surf and suck. Just making that clear now. So um, the thing about surf in the Philippines, it's become such a highlight for travel. Filipinos or foreigners come to the Philippines for world-class surfing. Yeah. And now paddle boarding, I have to say the Philippines is the haven for paddle boarding. And more so, I believe Coron is really like the jewel of paddle boarding. I'm getting yeah. excited talking about paddle boarding in Coron because that's how I fell in love in, with Coron and invested in Coron. Oh. Um, yeah. So that said, I, uh, I actually came from um, a family of I grew up with tourism. Um, Christine Ibareta, you remember coming to our travel agency years ago. My parents were in the travel business for about 40 years. So me, from passion to the tourism um, business is going full circle. And I'm very passionate about tourism, especially in the Philippines. So um, that said, surfing and SUP is really key. Because, wow, ang ganda ng Pilipinas. Until now, even if I probably have paddled over a hundred times in Coron, every wow. time I'm back in the island. What's the longest paddle boarding you've done? <laughs> uh, 24 hours. What? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, of course, with the stops also. Um, but um, Shargao is another great place, actually, for um, SUP. They hold... Um, very interesting long distance paddles. It's an international competition now called the Philippine Paddle Games. Um, and I'm so enthusiastic about paddling in the Philippines because that's the best way to discover the islands. Ang ganda, you will really see how turquoise and how clear the waters are, how beautiful the skies are. All the more now that it's closed for months, mm -hmm. it's even clearer and more beautiful. Wow. So, Wait, okay. Yeah. Okay. So now on the new normal, meron ba yung parang booking before doing the paddling, ganon stuff? Well, I have to be honest. There's no bookings yet now. But this okay. is so exciting. This is why this, um, what HSMA is doing is so exciting because you're giving really good deals. And um, by the way, Miss Christine Ibareta, I peeped because I wanted to book <laughs> for a staycation at the HSMA site. Oh my gosh, the savings is. It's, it's unimaginable. I didn't know how great savings was with the HSMA site. So everyone check that out. And um, with this new GPS TV, it's super exciting because what I'm really interested to learn is about, let's say, safety protocol, protocol for traveling. I think people shouldn't be scared to travel anymore as long as the protocol is followed. 
So I'm excited to hear that from all of you. Yeah, you speaking right now we be just so excited. Oh, uh, for the benefit of those who do not know, ba kasi meron pang hindi nakatry ng paddle boarding, surfing, yung nakikita natin madalas. And Miss Michi, correct me if I'm wrong, paddle boarding yung nakatayu ka or uh-huh. kaya, kayak yung nakaupo. Am I right? Yes. yes. Standing. You're you... standing. Mm-hmm. You guys should definitely try that so ating viewers. Thank you, Miss Michi. I'm sobrang kinilig ako just imagining what you're narrating. Now, guys, ang ating next panelist na aking tatanungin, please wag niyo po siyang papasampulin. We've known her for being a popular singer and but we don't know yet much about her agenda Isabella, well, me at least. Miss Kula Desma, thank you. I'm really really honored to have you here. Um, oh, it's my pleasure to be a part of this. You know, tourism is really a passion of mine. I love, I love our country. You know, mm-hmm. tourism should be the number one thing that can really bring about, you know, a great economy in our country. Yes, and weddings and events have been cancelled due to the pandemic. And as an owner of Hacienda Isabella, what are the challenges and measures taken by Hacienda Isabella to keep the business going. So I I know this will inspire a lot of our viewers right now, Ms. Ku. Yeah. Well, first of all, I, I was so glad that you started this whole thing with a prayer because I am a believer. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. And I believe that without Christ in our lives, we're really nothing. And I've been a Christian for 21 years now, when they announced that in three days there was going to be a lockdown, I moved from my home uh, from Magallanes and my daughter and I, Isabella, um, decided we were going to live na lang in Hacienda Isabella so that we could take care of our people here because, uh, you know, the business was none, you know, zero. But being a believer and, and believing that God is the God of the impossible, I said to my people, it's best that you bring your children to Hacienda Isabella. They can swim here. We can all stay negative. You know, so only 15% did not. You know. So what we did was that we started worshiping in the morning, thanking God. you know, doing Bible studies. I, it took about a month and then I started praying to the Lord and I said, Lord, you said you're the way, the truth, and the life. And I just said, can you please put life into this business because you're the God of the impossible and nothing is too hard for you. Yan ang sabi mo. Do you know what happened? Three days later, our agent said to my assistant, is cool at this, ma, okay, To, to host a hundred OFWs. And I said, of course, of course I'd be happy to have them here because I'm into ministry. I share the gospel. I share Jesus Christ. I said, that's a great so it So it started with a worship. But of course, you know. Catering these OFWs, am I right? No, we started worshiping because, you know, My peop- I felt my people and I needed to pray for our country, pray for, for each other to be safe. We prayed for frontliners. We prayed for everything. Mm-hmm. And then I believe that the favor of the Lord was really with us that when we asked him, please put life into this business because sabi mo, you're the way, the truth, and the life. Diba? So three days later after that prayer, He answered our prayer and um, bus loads came. That was the time when the uh, uh, the resorts in the south were o- were the only ones willing to take in the OFWs because the bigger hotels in Manila were not willing to take them in. Yeah. Yeah. And because we're not afraid of COVID-19, we have been serving Uh, OFWs for almost six months to seven months now, and none of us have gone positive because wow. we just pray and pray. Mm-hmm. Yes. Hindi kami natatakot because we believe that we are wrapped with the blood of Jesus. It might not be seen on us, but that is a spiritual truth that when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, 
he wraps you with his blood and that is powerful mm -hmm. and so that is my testimony and i continue to you know to continue to say to the lord lord may control ka over all things you are a sovereign god hindi mo kami papabayaan that we are serving our kababayans na kami ay dapuan yung COVID-19 na yan when you promise that you are faithful. Ang dami kasing pangako ng Panginoon eh. Sabi niya kung magdadasal kami together asking for what we want in agreement, He will do it for us in heaven. Thank so you. We, we claim those promises. And you know what? We are so glad. We are so glad that we were not fearful and because we we serve an almighty God, He takes care of us. Thank you. Ms. So ngayon dito sa pandemya na ito, how can, yeah, how, pwede pa bang magsalita? Yes, Hindi of na. course po. Okay, okay, I thought you were saying thank you, tama na. <laughs> Ay, okay. de <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just really inspired, yeah. Ms. Boo. That's why so I you said thank you. Yes. Alam mo, sabi ko kanina, I'm very passionate about tourism in our country. You know, Hacienda Isabella has 70 unique rooms. Okay. Ano lang ito, hobby lang, because my interest is really uh, architecture. And so, mm -hmm. kung hindi ako kumakanta, I'm here, you know, I tell them what to do. And now, it's become, uh, you know, a, a resort and restaurant. And amazing what God is doing uh, with us for the people who need help right now in the in the pandemic during the pandemic but you know what i have one suggestion for tourism that i have always said bakit yung nagta-travel at nakaupo sa flights kunyari no yung mga yung mga Cebu Pacific Philippine Airlines ano yan captured audience yan eh bakit hindi tayo nagpapadala ng mga videos that you know, of different places. Kasi maraming Pilipino na hindi, you know, they'd rather go to Hong Kong or to Japan, you know, and, you know, spend time in other countries and spend their, you know, uh, hard-earned money to go to those places. Samantalang, we have so many amazing places here. Mm -hmm. So, sa akin, Sayang, sana the tourism department really, you know, talk to our airlines and use those, you know, uh, hours and hours where people, especially coming from America, the, the Filipinos coming from America, mga balikbayans. And I know that more Filipinos are spending more time in our, you know, beautiful uh, res uh, resorts and uh, scenic places. Pero... Ano pa eh, ang dami-dami pang pwedeng maengganyo. Kung mm -hmm. makikita nila kung gaano kaganda yung mga places natin. Visually, we have yeah. to show them visually, di ba? And also, you know. and also the know. experience. True, Miss Koo, no? Parang meron nga pong sinasabi ngayon. I just saw in the internet one tweet. We live where you go vacation to. So, di ba? Tayo na nga mismang mga Pilipino yung very much privileged to have this beautiful country might as well be, you know, yes, take, yes, take, yes. take the privilege of exploring it yourself. Total bansama naman na to. But Ms. Ku, when the OFWs arrived, as you mentioned, what were the first measures of like, um, like in terms of business measures that you had to, that you had to take during that time? And if hanggang ngayon, ina-apply niyo po yun? Well, in the beginning, nung dumating yung mga OFWs, they had masks on. Okay? okay. Wala silang, ano, wala silang mga, ano, pero may distancing sila. Okay. But, you know what? Uh, the good thing about that, they were very grateful. Kasi marami kung naririnig ninyo yung mga OFWs, kung saan-saan sila na destino, and they would yes. sleep kung saan-saan lang sa true. OWA, and all those and, places. And after their stay, ang, school, yeah. Yeah, after their stay yeah. in school, wala pong nag-positive sa COVID? Wala. Wala. Praise God. Um, Praise I think, uh, yeah, yeah. Because actually they were here for like a month and a half, you know, because wala pang masakyan eh. Okay. Wala pang transportation. It was really a lockdown. But it was our, you know, we felt 
that our, the best thing that we can do for them was really give them good food, you know, and also provide yung mga, kung ano yung mga kailangan nila. They have, they had some requests about some food na nagpapabili. And at the same time, we provided spiritual nourishment, which is prayer every day, twice a day. And there were many who, who joined that. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Maraming maraming salamat po. And before I close this panel, well. um, any last words from our uh, panelists on how d- would you um, advise our viewers right now to practice a mindful and responsible traveling, lalo na ngayon? So anyone can answer, anyone can speak or add. Well, um, may, I, may I stay first? Yes, of course. Okay. Okay. Um, I think the future is here now. The future of travel is here now. Uh, we are starting to do things that we've never ever done before. And um, the future of travel will always include uh, a lot of health and safety measures. And um, cumbersome as it may be, we have to face it because we don't expect, uh, people are saying that, uh, it will take until 2024, 2025 for the, for the whole world to be vaccinated, you know? So we, we have to protect ourselves with uh, that, even if, even if uh, they say that the curve has flattened or not too many infections, but there's still one or two, you know, asymptomatic people will be running all over the place, you know? So we have to be careful. That's why a lot of health and safety protocols will be part of the travel industry. The, in the future, and we are beginning to uh, exercise them now. And wait, I want to say something, Miss Ku. You know, thank you for sharing what you did because you know that uh, I made a comment in in my. I don't know if you've seen the chat room. I made a comment that what you shared with us today, I think, is enough more than enough to fill my spiritual uh, nourishment for this week, for the whole week. <laughs> so it was very good and as you said the prayers that you said every day um, I, I believe in that and I'm sure the Lord uh, Jesus you know covered your place with his uh, holy blood and that's what prevented you from amen. getting contaminated thank you thank you amen can I come in you know what we have uh, we're, you know what we're doing Aya I, I asked my guy who who actually does the you know building and all that sabi ko, let's put in in many places around especially in the entrance when the bus stops they can wash their hands I think that would be a good thing to do around the city also that our mayors or local government can do provide water for washing uh, kasi matagal na yung need na yan eh, na uh, kahit mga public public toilets, you know. Um, kasi I'll tell you ha, uh, Bob, yeah. alam mo ba, may story ako dyan eh. I met this old woman, no, who's about 75 years old, 80 years old siguro. And she said, I've never been hospitalized. Sabi ko, anong sikreto? Sabi niya, I always wash my hands and it's really true kasi kaya ako i don't use those mga alcohol and whatever if i pick up a little thing i'll wash my hands right away kasi pag hindi nakakalimutan natin nilalagay natin ang kamay natin yung sa pagkain and then our you know kung saan saan sa mata and so it is so important to have water and to always wash our hands thank you thank you miss Jude, it's really a personal hygiene. Miss Margie, you were saying something? Oh, yes, it's, I totally agree with Bob that we have to learn to live with the virus. And that's a fact and that's a reality. We just have to be extra vigilant. You know, as, as travelers, as future um, tourists or travelers, we must not mind the protocols of the destination nor the hotel that we're going to. You know, it is because for the safe, it is for the safety of the guests, the safety of the employees, that all of these are in place. Yes, sometimes it can take some time. It may not be as fast as you would have wanted it to be. But, you know, we must understand that these are the things that we need to be very, very vigilant so that, so that, you know, 
all our travels, all our stay, our day to day living would be safe. It is really about being vigilant and of course about hygiene. And of course, and I will always second coup, it's all about prayers. Believe in someone up there. Very good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um anyone else wanted to add or are we okay? Are we good? Aya, can I oh. um, add something to that? Yes, Miss Michi, of course. Yes. Okay, so I'm looking at the words. I'm looking at um, what people have said here. I'd like to read something from Hannah Tabios to everyone. Who will provide the industry updates, ma'am? DOT official or will you be hiring a host for that? Because I'm really making a bang, these updates. Because, you know, um, for every province, for instance, for, for Coron, uh, when you go in, I, I'd really love to fly in, but they house you in a hotel for 14 days and I was trying to avoid that. So, yeah. but also coming back from Coron to Manila, the first flight out, which got canceled, then I took a boat back to go. As soon as I hit Manila, I was so shocked. They just let me enter my car from the boat. Nobody oh. took nothing. And I was like, ooh, but I'm from, I knew we were COVID free back then, but it was just so free to yeah. go back. So this is a bit shocking to me. So I'm kind of wanting to see the updates of maybe Manila to here, Manila to Cebu, Manila to here. So um, who will be? That's a good question from Hannah, right? Uh, yes. Aya, what do yes. you say about? Thank you so much, Hannah Tabios from Manila Bulletin. And when was this, Miss Michi, your experience? Uh, this was precisely July 13 this year because. I was stuck in Coron for a whole 123 days, four months alone in my house. <laughs> but I didn't mind because we were COVID free then. That's what the LGU told us. Um, mm -hmm. But then the first flight out that was announced, I booked. It was a Cebu pack. July 11, then it got canceled. And I said, I can't wait for August 3, the next flight, which never happened. So I took a boat. So that was uh, July 13. Mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago, no. But otherwise, people were like asking me, so when you arrived at the port, did they quarantine you? And I said, no. I just went straight to my car, which was mm -hmm. then kind of shocking, no? Um, mm -hmm. But going out to Coron, they're very strict. The LGU is very, very strict, um, the protocol. We're really, no one is spared from staying in certain uh, quarantine centers. Considering that um, the protocols, the implementation and execution of um, safety protocols per LGU differs from one to another. And for me, it is beyond my personal control and our control here. Um, what can you do from your own sectors, like from your own businesses, your own professions, just to like at least give, I hope, to answer the question of Ms. Hannah. Because I, I believe, like what Sir Bob has mentioned, it is a collective effort. Eh? So I think now the, 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 um, my, the question is, what can we do about it? What do you think? Anyone can start. You can answer. Yeah, I, I, I think, don't think the entire sector. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh... Go ahead, Bob. Your your call. Uh, yeah, I um I don't think we in the private sector have the have the power to you know to uh, uh, exert over the LGUs. A government agency must be the one to oversee what the LGUs are doing. And I think the, the, the Department of Tourism is now starting to do that. And now that's the reason why I think the other day, or was it yesterday, that the announcement was made that the LGU, um, Boracay, has now approved that uh, visitors are coming in, things like that. So, you know, the, it must be a government agency that should control these LGUs. We in the private sector will just have to wait and see and try to nudge the government to really help us out by doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to our panelists, uh, Ms. Christine, Ms. Margie, Ms. Koo, Ms. Michi, and Sir Bob. Thank you. And to our media partners, thank you so much for your questions. And we hope to answer still the remaining questions that you have. Thank you so much. Walang hanggang pasasalamat and mabuhay po tayong lahat.
before thank you, thank you. Thank before you. i thank you before i proceed i'd like to acknowledge our media attendees yeah. um from philippine star we have kat talavera thank you for gracing us your presence from manila bulletin miss hannah tabios from inquirer.net joel migos from cnn philippines paulo barcelon we also have from ptv4 diane Querer and ttg miss rosa ocampo also, um, a question that was raised earlier. Sorry, I wasn't able to um, cut the discussion kanina. But the question was, will there be a particular or regular segments for GPS TV? Again, the question is from Ms. Hannah Tabios from Manila Bulletin. Thank you for your question. It's a nice question. Will there be a particular or regular segments for GPS TV? The answer is... Yes, of course. GPS TV will follow a lifestyle magazine show format and updates will be showcased in this style. So as for syndicated programs, um, we are providing talents via our ad hoc program team. So three week live stream yon, and we will invite influencers, industry experts, thought leaders to join us in our discussion. So from relatable commoners like me, you know, common travelers to experts. You know, thank you, thank you, thank you so much to our influencers who are also here in our Zoom and to our viewers sa Facebook. If you are still there, continuously na nanonood pa rin maraming maraming salamat. This is all definitely for you. Woo! Okay, so hashtag go safe, go travel. We finished our panel discussion and now I'm just so much thrilled to uh check this out so again don't forget to subscribe to subscribe to our gps tv and our like our facebook page gps tv official ph and now meron tayong online contest okay so um you can throw back your own memorable destination photo you wish to visit again and share with us how you can prepare yourself to go safe go travel so tag us with the hashtags hashtag go safe go travel and hashtag gps tv to get a chance to win soaring freebies and getaways so it is a free overnight stay at a resort out of town Wow. Make just just make sure to tag 10 friends with your best photos and with yes captions. So guys, the banag post ka lang ng throwback picture na kapag overnight stay ka na sa in yung gustong resort. So you may visit our socials again on Facebook and on YouTube for more uh, details. Um at this point I'm just um more of happy excited and hopeful hopeful is the word thank you for those who participated in the open forum and we hope that our panelists have en enlightened you with the gps tv has in store diba? and thank you so much to i will in this juncture i will acknowledge to those who we will really would like to thank for making this launch and project possible thank you um ghosts Philippines Soar High or GPS TV wouldn't be made possible without these people. Hotel Sales and Marketing Association in partnership with the Department of Tourism and Tourism Promotions Board. We would like to thank Ms. Christine Ibarreta, Mr. Benji Martinez, Ms. Amy Villena, Ms. Celeste Romualdo, Ms. Rose Libonco, Ms. Margarita Munsayak, Ms. Christina Carion, Ms. Carmela Bocanegra, Ms. Pearl Peralta Maklang, Mr. Michael Albana, and of course, our panelists for sharing your wisdom for today, Ms. Michi Kalika Soto, Ms. Kuledesma, Mr. Bob Zozobrada, and of course, Ms. Christine as well. To our sponsors, Hacienda Isabella, Balay Isabel, and Chateau Royal and Ace Water Spa. Makita kita tayo, guys, sa mga adventures ninyo. And you can also catch my travels on my socials with hashtag iAdventures. Um, you can follow me at iAfernandez underscore both on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Again, this launch, this project is not for only for my personal leisures, but it's also 
for the nation. It is for the over 40 million Filipino peoples affected by the pandemic. And now it is the time na magbayanihan tayong lahat to raise our flag and continue the good fight that we've started ever since. It is a collective effort. Demand what we have to see and act upon what we need to do. And that's it. Um, thank you so much for being with me on today's launch. And this has been Aya Fernandez. Mabuhay tayong lahat. Go Philippines! Soar high.